Hi, Will. Um, you, uh, this is Will Clark, my, um, uh, my friend. Yeah, we haven't spoken in a while, but we are friends. Uh, you're a world champion triathlete. Uh, you were part of the triathlon team, which is a, a, a marketing project I did uh, decades ago, which I enjoyed a lot. There was maybe 12 people at the peak, a lot of world champions like you. Yeah. And uh, you're a British champion as well. And um, I don't know, you're a funny guy. You're a controversial guy. You have you have cool opinions, yeah. I like I like knowing you. You 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 were very inspiring over the years. And I dressed up for the interview, so you see, I have the <laughs> yes. Ironman UK hat. Oh, I didn't didn't know that you did Ironman UK. Yeah, yeah, I did it when it was in Sherburne, you know. So. All right, the um, it's probably one of the worst Ironmans you can do, I think. That one. Um, I haven't done. So I've done only five, so it was not the worst one I've done. Yeah. The worst one was Norseman because I quit, and I really my motivation was zero for that race. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had a great run. It was really, and English countryside is like 10 out of 10. Yeah. I really want to go back and see the countryside there. Really awesome. Anytime. Yeah, cool. So you, 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 you were a professional athlete. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 So I, I retired. Um, I retired at the end of last year. Um, stopped racing. Had a long career. I was going since 2000 and um, I was professional from probably there's no definite start time but I started making money probably when I was about 2005 I think mm -hmm. um, so that was 15 years 15 year long career okay so so you you stopped now so how does that feel that you're not a professional athlete because it's a bit strange that you finish a career what, what, what how old are you what's your age now I'm 35 now mm -hmm. um, you know 35 it's not it's not particularly old I definitely had probably had some more good years in me if, if I really wanted to, but um, I, in the end, I didn't really want to. I, I was, um, I thought I put everything, um, everything that I had into it. Um, I wasn't going to get much better. The uh, financial, um, it's not, it's, it's getting harder and harder to make money in triathlon as well. I'm sorry, uh, Will. I just have to take this. It's my mom. She's calling, my, my kid could be. It's going to be part of the interview. Cool. Just let me see. Just a second. Hello? Yeah, I don't know. I got worried. My mom is taking care of my son and okay. she called me three times. So I was a bit worried. Anyway, um, if she calls again, I'll answer, but she was not answering. So, um, so, you know, you were saying that you could have gone more, but you stopped. So how did that feel? You know, I mean, you have to start a new career at, at 35. You have to figure out something, you know. So what are you doing now? What is your plan? Yeah, so I stopped. Um, I, was co I was coaching people the last, the last five years, actually. The first girl, um, the first girl that I coached called uh, she's called Ruth Ruth Arsel. Um, she was she also ended up being my most um, my most successful athlete at the moment. She won um, she won Ironman Hawaii overall um, overall as an age grouper last year, and she's the second fastest age grouper um, to compete in that race. So she's gone she's gone pro this year. So she was good for me. Um, kind of it obviously gives you some credibility if you can bring an athlete from pretty average to um to to exceptional um but yeah i st i it just i picked up athletes along the way kind of it, it grew each year and it, it grew to the point where i could finish i could finish um doing triathlon and it wouldn't really make a dent in my um in my uh in my salary so i i wasn't I just had to ask myself the question: Do you want to? Uh, do you want to carry on doing this? Do you have any more, any more thing, any more, any more energy left to give to it, or do you want to um, finish now and then concentrate on the on the next thing? Yeah, uh, and well, but um, just ask you. So, um, what, what do you think? What makes a good coach? Because I always remember this. You know, Gavin Noble was part of the triathlon team as well, and he had this funny joke. Uh, where he says that uh, an athlete should not trust a skinny skinny coach. A coach should, coach should be fat. And I, I always understood that as a way that the coach should not care about herself, himself, but about the athlete. You know, they should really be fully dedicated, like, you know, Popov's coach or something who was like a super fat, super fat uh, guy, fully dedicated to him, you know. So yeah, what, sure. do you think, what do you think makes a great coach, you know? It seems, um, it seems that you really wanted to be a coach. You know, that's my impression from yeah. what you said. I dis um I disagree with him a little bit in that I think I think a good coach has 
they could do with having been there themselves and, and experienced it themselves and felt what it's like to be an athlete. Obviously, when you're an athlete, you put your heart into soul about discovering, um, discovering how, to, how to be the best, how to, um, you kind of go through that whole journey yourself. So you're kind of in the best position to deliver that on, to, on, to deliver that on someone else. Um, I kind of, to be honest, I started coaching because I was, you know, I wanted a bit more security really. And obviously it's, um, it's a good thing to get into, but actually I discovered that I really, I really like it. And I really genuinely care about, about the athletes that I'm, that I'm working with. So I think that equipped me quite well. And um, I think it also shows, shows in my coaching that, you know, I, I care about those guys and want the best for them. If they're having a bad day, then I'm, and I'm having a bad day as well with them. Um, so, yeah, but I think, yeah, as I said before, you, you know, I went through 15 years, well, 15, 20 years of this um, living and breathing it. So you just, you're just really well equipped to um, deliver that to someone else after that. And uh, you know what to do to, um, to kind of get them to reach their, to reach, to reach their best level. Yeah. And uh, who do you like to coach the most? Elites or complete beginners or? Um, to be honest, I like coaching. Um, I like coaching the middle range guys the best. Um, the guys who are, um, you know, very good age groupers who are looking, who are knocking on the door of doing, doing really well in, um, in the best events. Um, like, like I'm in Hawaii and 70.3 worlds and races like that. So they're, um, they can already swim. You know, I don't necessarily have to teach them how to float in the water and how to, uh, you know, the correct techniques so much. They kind of know pretty much what they're doing. It's more kind of guiding them through and uh, bouncing some ideas off them and um, getting them to the race in um, fresh and, and ready to go. I think that's, um, that's kind of, yeah, if I, look up, if I look back at my career, that's kind of where, that's, that's obviously what I, what I had to do with myself. I think coaching elites is difficult because um, it gets to a point where you're kind of, you're kind of capped out a bit. You're kind of, you're pretty much at the level that you're going to get to. And um, it's kind of hard to accept really. You know, you'd like to, um, you, would, you would like to keep, you would like to keep on improving like a beginner, but you, it, it does get to a point where you just plateau out and then it's very, very difficult to, uh, to find the, the rest of the gains. And it could be kind of, you know, unless it's something like equipment or something like that, it, it can start to get a bit impossible. Um, so, it's, so it's really hard to coach. I, I just, I just much prefer, I much prefer that kind of middle, middle range where they, um, yeah, where you can, I think that's where I can have the best impact. So where they have already some knowledge and they are filtered out, so you're not working with complete basics, but there's yeah. still a lot of room for improvement. I like that. I'm thinking about consulting for companies or you exactly. know, that's like small and medium enterprises. You know, they are kind I think of it's more, it's more, they obviously, I think they still get some good gains. They're really, they're really into the sport. So they're very, very happy if you can, if you can do well for them. Mm -hmm. um, if you, if you struggle to, if you really struggle to, um, to bring an elite on and improve them, that sometimes it's kind of, it feels, it feels like it's your fault, but you know, sometimes there's, there's not a lot you can do. Yeah. So I just want to ask you a little bit about psychology of performance, because I learned a lot from you and, and other guys, you know, uh, that I spent time I, I, in sports. I was not a performer. I mean, I just hang out, hang around, but um, I, I always have this feeling that whenever I race, I always wanted to quit any second and it was basically me fighting against this unpleasant feeling or yeah. pain, you know, and I, I, you feel the same, you know, like when you're pushing it, you know, do you have this kind of urge to quit, but you win it or you're fully aggressive and you don't think about quitting when you're under pressure in a, in a high, high priority race. Or... I think, I think everyone, I think everyone has that urge and there's just, const especially in Ironman and um, but I think everyone's kind of fighting that urge of, I really, I, I, I would do anything for this to, fin to, to, to be over right now. So I can just kind of collapse over the finish line and be done with it. Um, you just kind of, you just kind of need to battle that the best you can. I mean, a, a lot of it comes from training. So obviously if you're, um, if you're totally unprepared for an event and you're, and you're hurting from, from the beginning, then it's going to be a very, very long, hard day. Yeah. But in reality for, um, if you're well trained and you're well prepared for it, you're only kind of suffering for kind of maybe a third of the race. Um, I can, I can, I can generally say the first, say the swim is the swim is the swim, and then the bike. It's only really the last course, kind of forty k, where I'm really looking forward to getting off a bike. And then on the run, it's only really the last. If you get it right, it's probably only the last ten k where you're really looking forward to it. Okay. Um, you are not talking about the Olympic triathlon. <laughs> just, oh yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think it, it, a lot of it is getting it right, getting the nutrition right. Um, 
if I if I had to suffer my way through a whole line, man, I'm not sure I'd do it. I would have, um, yeah. I, I would have stopped before that happened because it's it's too far to really suffer the whole way. You need to at least have um, get through half the race before you before you have to start fighting the demons. Okay, that's interesting. So, did you do any preparation for that, or you think that just comes naturally to you the way you deal with that with that with that I feeling? Think it, you know? I think it comes naturally to me. It's um, you know, and also. Um, you, you go through a bit of that in training um, then you have a long taper and you get yourself mentally up for this event. Um, so by the time you're on the start line, you're ready to fight. And if you're, re if you're, if you're ready to fight, then you can do anything. If you're, if you're not, then, um, then it will show in the race and you'll kind of, you'll kind of uh, look like you look like you, you have the, it will look like that you're giving up. Um, so yeah, it's, um, at the end of the day, like I was, I was also making money from this, you know, and it's, um, you know, it's it's kind of fun when you're in fifth, you're in fifth or sixth place, um, third place is two or three minutes in, in in front of you, and you're battling that guy to kind of pass him. And if you can, every person you pass is a big kind of progression in in your career and way well, in the race and then in in your career. So it kind of it it helps add that bit of motivation actually as well. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can if you can bring a couple of thousand extra dollars home because you dug in for 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 thirty or forty minutes, then it's a then it's a good feeling and it's worth and it's and it's when it's worthwhile doing plus it's important to your career as well yeah. i'm just remembering now that as you're talking you did a you did a flip when you won the world championship as a junior <laughs> yeah um, i mean i would be so scared to do that i would you were probably super tired and then you were like did you think should i do the flip or not or how did uh, that happen yeah sometimes like as a, i used to be a gymnast when i was younger <laughs> like like very young so uh, i so i just had that i have that in my um I have that in my skills. Um, I definitely, I, d I definitely did it. And when I did, and when I kind of did it, I was like, "Oh shit, you're gonna, you, you can cramp here." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think uh, I think I probably did it, did it once, and then I, and then I cramped afterwards. But I used to, I used to do that after, that after quite a few races, actually. Yeah, um, that's funny. Yeah, that's the crowd used to like it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Well, anyway, this th this interview that I'm doing, I often try to focus on innovation and design, and I'm very interested in in how much elite athletes. You know, because you're also how much you know about products, you know, about all the stuff that you're using, because it's not only you, but triathlon, like many other sports, is super technical. And you have this like like a pile of things that you're using from, you know, heart rate monitors to like glasses, bikes, uh, nutrition, coaching and all that stuff. And you, you, you guys know more than anybody else, you know, what works, what doesn't work, you know. And uh, through coaching, you're giving some of that knowledge. But how much did you work with companies? You know, how much did they, you know, did you give them feedback? Or what do you think about the stuff that you were using? Is it, can it be improved? Did you participate in design and improvement? Yeah, it's, we, um, I don't think, I don't think I really, I don't think I really worked with companies. I mean, I had, we, we had good sponsors. And I think part of being a good ambassador is you kind of, you you take the products and give them some exposure but you also you know it's um it's it's one of the ideas obviously to give back some ideas some yes yeah, some development you know how can we how can we how can we make this product better um kind of feedback but i don't, i can't say i did did that much of that we did quite we did quite a bit of that with race suits mm -hmm. um race suits is something that um when i first met you it's it's, it's not something I, that, that i ever considered yeah. as um as being something that that we needed to get right but it's something that really um it's come on in the past years so that a race suit is worth, um, you know, it's worth minutes, yeah. um, minutes, well, you know, potentially, potentially five minutes off your, um, off an Ironman time compared to a rubbish skin suit. So that's one of the things that we kind of focused on. Um, they have all sorts of different fabrics now. It needs to be tight. Just, yeah. So that's something that's come on in the past years. I think one of the other things is, um, yeah, cycle tech's really big. So obviously, um, you know the the last race I did in Ironman Hawaii. It was um, you know, everyone, all of the pro athletes have um, have fantastic bikes. They have they have top of the range bikes. They have their the best equipment. They have their position dialed on it as well. So everyone's everyone's no one's really giving anything away there. Whereas maybe ten ten years ago, people people were giving a lot away a lot. So now it's um, you know you have to be very very strong on the bike, but you also have to have to be very very clued up on the on the um, aerodynamic side so you um yeah so you're not only getting your body position on the right um on the bike uh pretty much pretty pretty much perfect for you um as comfortable and as aerodynamic as you can but also your 
your uh, equipment so you say so your wheels your tire choices the tire pressure right. all sorts of things so, so there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into that that's probably the that's probably the biggest thing um in terms of in terms of uh coaching it's yeah it's um i use everyone's using everyone's using um you know their sports watches these days and their garments and there's quite a few metrics that i that i use on on training peaks um which uh which kind of has uh, has made things a lot easier in in the past kind of kind of kind of five years um like that goes a long way to um to being able to you know to coach athletes better and, and to know exactly where they are in, in their training well just the, the question i want to ask is that how much do you think that product designers are listening to athletes you know because athletes you know they know that in my opinion you guys know the best you know like elite athletes you know the best how to tweak every millimeter every every little you know extra second from the equipment and how much do you think they're listening enough or is taking too long you know like from the you know how much when you had an idea like this bike could be better or this thing could be better how much did you have to wait for that to actually um, show up on the market yeah. i think very few i think very few i think i think for for most people it's above their um it's above their pay grade to be um yeah it's above their pay grade and i think i think they're not really listening much to the athletes and vice versa mm -hmm. i think for the top guys, I think they have quite a lot to do with um, with development, um, with 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 the bikes, and um, how to kind of maximize um, maximize comfort, ma maximize speed, um, and uh, yeah, and they and they listen and they listen a lot more to their to their to their suggestions. But yeah, I definitely think it's more it's more kind of further up the line. Um, the kind of yeah, the guys who are who are um, who are on the big bucks and getting um, you know have have a big kind of part, big kind of involvement in the company. I think yeah. I never really, I never really got into working with um, sponsors that much um, on things like that. It was just, it was, it was, it was, it was small things like they send me a skin suit and then I'd send a few suggestions back. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how much they kind of, they kind of work with that, but it's very, very small really. Yeah. I remember, I remember Conrad was working a lot with Specialized and he knew Ned Overend and, uh, you know, they spoke a lot and he spoke to engineers and he was pushing for 29 inch, inch wheels in mountain bikes, which yeah. he was one of the big, you know, now that's a standard and, you know, 15 years ago, he was the one pushing and asking them to make frames for him to research. He was very much connected to Specialized, but I don't know how much other companies, bike companies care, you know. To I don't think that much. Yeah, but he was very into, um, he was kind of, he was very into all that stuff, wasn't he? And he was, um, he was, he was yeah. quite good like that. And I think they probably listened to him as well a lot, a lot yeah. more. Okay. Okay, cool. So where do you see the future of triathlon? You know, how do you see triathlon 30 years from now? Well, hopefully, hopefully next year there'll be some races back on and okay. we're through this, through this COVID thing. But I think this is going to, this is going to take, give the industry a pretty, a pretty, pretty big hit, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure how, how well I am will recover from this um, for hmm. a start. But I think it's um, yeah, it's hard. It, it's hard to tell. It's um, the sport just keeps the sport keeps on getting bigger and bigger every year. Um, I think um, I think tech will will continue to improve, you know. And I think, but I think in terms of um, in terms of athletes level, I think it's it's going to start to plateau now. I think it's um, it's risen quite fast over the years, and I think now it's probably it's not going to keep on rising as it is. I think the depth, the depth of um, good athletes at the top will probably keep on continuing, but in terms of um, keeping on getting faster, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's, um, it's going to get, going to get a hell of a lot, much, hell of a lot faster than half faster than it already is. Yeah. The past yeah. few years, it, um, the past few years, it got really, really fast because as, as, as I said, everyone started getting really clued up on, um, on how fast they can go on the bikes. And everyone started realizing if you do these things right, you can, you can really fly. Yeah. Well, one thing that I would like to see, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 42 years old, I did triathlon in the 90s, and back then the, the, the bikes were much more interesting. You know, there was a zip bike and a soft ride, and they were much yeah. more dynamic before they put the diamond, you know, rules uh, by U UCI. And uh, I would love to see more creative bikes. You know, I, I'm really a little bit, it's a little bit boring to see this always the, the standard looking bikes. You know, yeah. that would really be cool. I hope that can come back in the next 10, 20 years. Or maybe someone can make a race with these really cool bikes and equipment. You know, that's outside the regulation. Supposedly. Yes, you've got the um, you've got the Sipo. The Sipo brought out a new bike last year that was pretty funny looking, and yeah. you've got um, Ven yeah, Ventum and um, the Svelo P5, P5, P3. They're all pretty strange looking. 
Yeah, but they're always they're always kind of the diamond shape still. They have to stick to that, you know. They cannot yeah. exit, yeah, because of the regulation. And what do you think about psychology? I think you think there is some space for improvement there because nutrition is, let's say, very high. Equipment is almost at the point of regulation. Coaching is very high, but I think there is a, a space maybe for the for the mind improvement, you know, so people focus more. Definitely, yeah, yeah. I think I mean I mean people people are getting pretty into it now, but I think it's. Um... Yeah, it's something that it's something that's going to improve, improve, improve quite a lot. I'd say the um, the, the heads are very strong, especially in especially in nine man distance racing. You know, you know when it's such a long day, and as we said, the kind of demons start to come in, and they st and they start to get in the way and hold you back. It's um, it's all about sil it's all about silencing those as much as you can um, mm -hmm. through various techniques. And it's um, I did a bit with sports psychology, but not not kind of heaps. But there's um, there's definitely quite 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 a lot you can do, and I think I think people are kind of learning learning all the time about um yeah new skills working 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 with more people to um to kind of get that get that nailed because it's definitely it's definitely something that it's definitely one of the biggest factors okay okay cool um i don't know that's it i mean you said you had 20 30 minutes i would love to talk to you for 10 hours but um <laughs> thanks man yeah yeah, yeah do, wh wh one more thing what's your favorite who is your favorite let's say triathlete triathlete of all your of all time triathlete of all time um Women, i think my buddy, yeah yeah, th um, yeah there's lots of interesting characters out there at the moment you've got um you've got you've got hyper hyper professional um kind of model athletes like jan fedona who kind of can't put a foot wrong yeah. um he's he's an except he's an exceptionally talented does everything right has all the best sponsors um you know probably probably well funded as well so he's um so he, yeah he's he's well he's well looked after his sponsors so he's got he's pretty much got performance nailed nailed in and then you've got kind of raw raw characters like Lionel Sanders who come kind of come along with no no real with you know poor technique but just kind of hot big heart and lungs and um just kind of muscle the way through it um you know, I've always been a big fan, a big fan of my friend, um, Alice, my friend Alistair Brownlee, who I've been through, mm -hmm. been through my whole career with, with really. He's, um, yeah, he's in my eyes, he's he's one of the most talented athletes that um, that has ever graced, yeah, graced the sport. So he's um, he's going to be he's going to be um, jumping across to um, I'm, yeah, he'll be he'll be he'll be racing Ironman Hawaii at some point um, again in the years to come. So it'd be interesting to see if he can do something there. But he's um, he's kind of a guy that guy that I look out for and hope that he um hope the best for him. Yeah, but brownies make the sport boring. It's like they win every time. And it's like Yeah, kind of yeah, it's slowing down though. You know, he's not um you know, he's he's getting older, he's you know, w you know, get, girls are starting to come into play and you know, settling down and mm. you know, his brother's his brother's got a dog, you know, so it's it's, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not it's not it's not like it was, but and he's you know, you get there's all sorts of guys up and coming, but he's still um I think if he if he can keep out the way of injuries and he can keep consistent, then he um, all all he needs is about a month before he can he can get oh, get okay. in shape. And um, he's definitely not cracked. I'm in Hawaii. Like he trundled in um, trundled in in Hawaii a few minutes before me um, last year. So he's um, he's got he's got he's got a lot to figure out there. But he'll definitely give it a good go and keep on pushing for that. Cool. Well, say hi to Claire and your son. And uh, you know, thank you very much. No worries, ciao, mate. Ciao. ciao. Good, to, good to chat. Ciao.